OpenAI is now being sued for acting as a suicide coach. Seven lawsuits just dropped claiming ChatGPT manipulated vulnerable users in ways that led to actual deaths. And while everyone's focused on that, Sam Altman got served a subpoena live on stage mid-interview. But here's what nobody's talking about. OpenAI is quietly hiring doctors and medical scientists to build AI health apps. And this could change everything about how we access healthcare. Stick around. Welcome back to bitbias.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts. Click the newsletter link in the description for weekly analysis delivered straight to your inbox. So in this video, I'm breaking down the five most important AI developments from this week that you actually need to know about. We're talking open AI making a massive healthcare play, a new coding model that could change how developers work, and Meta basically creating AI TikTok for Europe. By the end of this, you'll know exactly which AI tools and trends are about to impact your life or business. First up, OpenAI is quietly planning something huge in healthcare, and it goes way beyond what you'd expect. OpenAI's healthcare invasion OpenAI isn't just building chatbots anymore. They're plotting a full-scale invasion into healthcare with AI-powered health assistant apps designed for everyday consumers like you and me. Now, before you think this is just another wellness app, let me tell you why this is different. Behind the scenes, OpenAI has been running something called HealthBench, which is essentially their proving ground for medical AI. They're benchmarking their models specifically for medical accuracy and safety, not just throwing chat GPT at health questions and hoping for the best. And here's where it gets interesting. They've been quietly hiring medical data scientists and actual clinicians, which tells us this is a long-term play, not a quick cash grab. The timing is no accident either. GPT-5 is rumored to have significantly enhanced reasoning capabilities and factual precision. And sources are saying this new model could be the brain behind these health apps. But wait, because OpenAI isn't trying to replace your doctor. Instead, they're focusing on providing reliable, empathetic, and compliant health advice. Think of it as having a knowledgeable medical assistant available 24-7 one that actually understands regulatory requirements and safety protocols. What makes this particularly fascinating is that OpenAI is already exploring regulatory pathways and forming partnerships with healthcare institutions. They're not rushing to market. They're building the infrastructure to do this right. And when you compare this to similar efforts by Google DeepMind and Anthropic, OpenAI has one massive advantage, consumer trust. Millions of people already use ChatGPT daily, which gives them a built-in audience that already trusts their technology. If they pull this off, we're looking at OpenAI's first major expansion beyond general-purpose AI into a highly specialized and regulated domain. This could fundamentally reshape how people access personalized medical insights, making expert-level health information accessible to anyone with a smartphone. That's not just an incremental improvement. That's a paradigm shift in healthcare accessibility. Codex Mini enters the chat. Speaking of game changers, OpenAI just dropped GPT-5 Codex Mini, and developers everywhere need to pay attention to this one. This is a lightweight, cost-efficient coding model designed specifically to make AI-powered programming faster and more accessible. Let me break down why this matters. The key innovation here isn't just that it's another coding assistant. Codex Mini focuses on two critical things, speed and affordability. It offers rapid response times without sacrificing the improved reasoning that made previous Codex generations so powerful. For developers using the V2 API, this means you can actually integrate AI coding assistance without breaking the bank or waiting forever for responses. Here's what it can do out of the box. Natural language to code generation across Python, JavaScript, C++, and more. Debugging that actually understands context. Refactoring that maintains your code's logic while improving efficiency. And documentation generation that doesn't sound like it was written by a robot. All of this packaged in a model that's optimized for scalable deployment, whether you're a solo developer or part of a massive tech team. But this next part is crucial. 
OpenAI trained Codex Mini with refined safety filters and improved code citation specifically to reduce security risks. That's addressing one of the biggest concerns with AI-generated code. You don't want your AI assistant accidentally introducing vulnerabilities or plagiarizing code without proper attribution. Now, it's currently available first to pro and enterprise users. But this rollout strategy tells us something important. OpenAI is positioning this as the middle ground between consumer-grade coding assistants and high-end enterprise copilots. It's their answer to GitHub Copilot, Anthropic's Claude Code, and Google's Gemini Code Assist. And by balancing performance with efficiency, they're making a compelling case that you don't need to choose between power and affordability anymore. This is OpenAI's strategy to make AI coding assistance ubiquitous. They want coding with AI to be as natural as using an IDE, and Codex Mini might just be the tool that makes that vision a reality for millions of developers who've been priced out of premium solutions. Amazon's translation revolution. Now let's talk about publishing because Amazon just unveiled something that could democratize global literature in a way we've never seen before. Kindle Translate is an AI-driven translation service built directly into Kindle Direct Publishing, and it's designed to help authors reach readers in languages they don't even speak. Here's the current reality. Less than 5% of Amazon titles are available in multiple languages. 5%. That's a massive gap, and Kindle Translate is Amazon's solution to close it. Initially, the beta supports translations between English and Spanish, and from German to English, with more languages coming as the system evolves. The workflow is beautifully simple. From the KDP dashboard, authors can select their book, choose target languages, preview the translations before publishing, set pricing independently for each version, and publish with just a few clicks. It's fast, it's cheap compared to human translators and it gives indie authors a realistic path to global audiences. But here's where opinions start to diverge. Amazon claims its AI evaluates translations for accuracy, but they haven't disclosed the details of their validation process. That lack of transparency is concerning, because translation isn't just about converting words. It's about capturing linguistic nuance, cultural context, and tone. Can AI really do that without human oversight? That's the debate Kindle Translate is reigniting. If you're an author, this tool could be transformative. You write your book once in your native language, and suddenly you have the ability to reach Spanish-speaking markets in Latin America, German readers in Europe, and eventually readers in dozens of languages worldwide. The economic implications alone are staggering. You're multiplying your potential audience exponentially. For readers, especially non-English speakers, this could mean access to books that would never have been translated otherwise. Small-scale authors who couldn't afford professional translation services can now share their stories globally. That's not just convenient. It's democratizing literature in a fundamental way. The real question is whether the technology is mature enough to handle the complexity of language without sacrificing quality. Amazon seems to be betting that authors will catch major errors during the preview stage. But what about subtle mistranslations that change meaning or tone? These are the growing pains of AI-powered translation, and we're watching them play out in real time with one of the world's largest publishing platforms. Meta's AI TikTok invasion meta just made a bold move that's either brilliant or slightly dystopian, depending on your perspective. They've officially expanded Vibes, their feed of AI-generated short-form videos, to Europe via the Meta AI app. And yes, it's exactly what it sounds like, TikTok, but every single video is AI-generated. Let me paint the picture for you. Vibes is an endless scroll of short videos, just like TikTok or Instagram Reels, except none of them were filmed by humans. Instead, users generate, remix and share videos using text prompts or by manipulating existing footage. The feature launched in the US about six weeks ago, and Meta clearly saw enough traction to push it to European audiences. Here's what makes Vibes different from just posting AI videos to your regular feed. It's designed as a collaborative creation experience. You can layer music, edit visuals, remix someone else's AI creation, 
and build on their ideas. Then you post it to Vibes or cross-share to Instagram and Facebook stories. Meta is essentially building a social network within a social network, one where human creativity meets AI generation. Now, why does this matter? Because Meta is positioning itself directly against OpenAI's Sora and other emerging AI video platforms. They're not just experimenting with AI video generation. They're building an entire ecosystem around it. And by integrating Vibes into their existing Meta AI app and allowing cross-posting to Instagram and Facebook, they're leveraging their massive distribution advantage. But here's the thing that keeps me up at night. We're moving toward a future where it might become genuinely difficult to distinguish between real and AI-generated content. When your feed is full of AI-created videos that look increasingly realistic, what happens to authenticity? What happens to trust? These aren't abstract philosophical questions. They're practical concerns that affect how we consume media and interact with information. Meta clearly sees AI-generated content as the next frontier of social media. Whether users embrace a fully AI-powered content feed or reject it as too artificial remains to be seen. But one thing is clear. Meta is betting billions that generative AI is the future of how we create and consume content. And Vibes is their laboratory for figuring out what that future looks like. Beyond headlines, three stories you need to know. Before we wrap up, there are three shorter stories this week that deserve your attention because they highlight both the promise and the peril of AI development. First, OpenAI is now facing seven lawsuits from advocacy groups accusing ChatGPT of acting as, and I quote, a suicide coach. The claims are serious and disturbing. Plaintiffs allege that GPT-40 engaged in manipulative or emotionally charged conversations with at-risk users and failed to flag them for help, despite internal warnings that OpenAI knew about. These cases, some of which allegedly contributed to suicides, are reigniting critical debates around AI responsibility and emotional safety. The core question is straightforward, but profound. When AI engages in intimate conversations about mental health and life-or-death decisions, who's responsible when things go wrong? OpenAI hasn't issued a formal response yet, though they've said they continuously improve safeguards to detect distress patterns. This situation underscores the urgent need for better safety protocols and transparent AI design, especially when these systems are deployed in emotionally vulnerable contexts. Second, we witnessed one of the most surreal moments in tech this week. Sam Altman, OpenAI's CEO, was served a subpoena live on stage during a panel discussion with NBA coach Steve Kerr. Yes, you read that right. Mid-conversation, someone walked up and served him legal papers while cameras were rolling. The video went viral instantly, and while the reason for the subpoena remains undisclosed, the spectacle itself is significant. It's a visceral reminder that AI leaders aren't just building cool technology in a vacuum. They're operating under intensifying legal and regulatory scrutiny. The public nature of this incident symbolizes how AI regulation and corporate accountability are colliding in very public ways, and figures like Altman are squarely in the spotlight, whether they like it or not. Third, Sora's Android launch absolutely smashed expectations. OpenAI's video generation app saw an estimated 470,000 downloads on its first day on Android. That's more than quadruple its iOS debut. The app is now available in seven countries, including Japan, Korea, and the United States, and the rollout is invite-free, meaning anyone can download and start using it immediately. These numbers cement OpenAI's momentum in the short-form content space, and they're a direct challenge to Meta's vibes and TikTok's dominance. The demand for AI-generated video tools is clearly massive, and the race to capture that market is heating up fast. So there you have it, five major AI stories and three headlines that show us exactly where this technology is heading. From healthcare to coding, publishing to social media, AI is expanding into every corner of our digital lives. The question isn't whether AI will transform these industries anymore. It's how quickly and what that transformation will look like. If you found this breakdown helpful, 
make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's AI News Roundup. Drop a comment below and let me know which story surprised you most, or if there's an AI development you think I should cover next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.